Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. I'm excited to talk with you for the first time about Visual Studio Mobile Center and how it helps developers ship great mobile apps faster. Today, I'll focus specifically on Mobile Center's test service, a platform for running automated tests against native and hybrid mobile apps, and the role of testing in shipping great experiences. Before we begin, a quick introduction of myself. My name is Justin Razak. I'm a senior program manager on the Mobile Center team and the product lead for the test service. Including my time at Microsoft, I've spent three and a half years working on developer tools in the testing space, and most of that time focusing specifically on mobile. Before that, I was helping shape and deliver products for enterprises like Target, Audi, Comcast, HBO, and Pepsi. I even worked on a strange app for the Xbox, allowing you to order Pizza Hut pizza from your game console. In today's webinar, we'll briefly cover exactly what Mobile Center is and who it is for. Then we'll discuss how to think about a modern application development lifecycle and how automated testing can supercharge your effectiveness. I'll introduce some of Mobile Center Test's key features before we dive into the good part, the demo. For today's demo, we'll be using the Espresso test framework for Android. We'll instrument a pre-existing test suite with the test cloud extensions, set up a new test run and execute it, review our results, and take a look at how we can debug failed tests. Finally, we'll conclude by sharing some useful resources and opening up for questions. You can enter questions into the discussion box at any time. So let's get started. Delivering and managing modern software requires an increasingly broad and complex set of tools. This is especially true of mobile apps where we have unique capabilities and challenges. In addition to the complexity of the mobile medium itself, the mobile ecosystem in which our apps live also presents unique challenges. For example, while we can ship as many times as we want on the web, the mobile apps we ship must move through the App Store publishing process, and this takes time. Because there is much we can't control, we need to make every second we can control count. This is where Mobile Center comes in. We've brought together all the critical tools and services needed to maintain great mobile apps into one place. Mobile Center features the next generation of products you know and love, like Hockey App and Xamarin Test Cloud, alongside a host of new services like Build and Analytics. Mobile Center was designed to work for every developer using any language or framework. Our goal is to abstract the work and let developers focus on the flow. After all, most mobile developers became developers to build great apps, not configure and fight with software tools. Now, of course we know that simply shipping our apps is not good enough, at least not anymore. Since the advent of the App Store over a decade ago, Users have been conditioned to have higher and higher expectations of the apps they download and install onto their phones. These expectations span from how long a user is willing to wait for a screen to load to how tolerant they'll be when a UI element is unresponsive. So what do these expectations actually mean for us and our apps? While about 80% of users say they're willing to continue trying an app after they encounter a bug, only 16% of users say they're willing to continue trying an app after they encounter two or more bugs. This means that as much as 84% of your user base could uninstall your app, never to return, if you ship just two bugs to production. This means the stakes are high. Once we ship these bugs to production, it's kind of like we're on a sinking ship with a hole in the bottom. Until we patch the hole, the ship will continue to sink. This is one of the reasons we think about the software development lifecycle in terms of feedback loops. The feedback loop is your app's path through development, distribution, observation, evaluation, and back to the start in development. Development and distribution are pretty self-explanatory. During observation, we're using tools like analytics, crash reporting, and user feedback channels to understand how our app is performing. During evaluation, we pour through the data we've collected and decide how to change the app to improve its performance. We define the size of our feedback loop by the amount of time it takes to ship an improvement to our app based on something we learned from the last release. To relate the size of the feedback loop to our leaky ship analogy, the shorter your feedback loop, the faster you can patch the hole, the faster you stop the ship from sinking. Let's take a closer look at the potential real cost of shipping serious bugs to production. Say we've recently launched a new app and it's growing quite popular. We see a steady download rate of 1,000 new users each week. In our excitement to get new features out to our awesome new users, we get a little bit sloppy and ship a few bugs along with those new features in our second release. 
Fortunately, we're using a crash reporting service like the one in Mobile Center, and we learn about the bugs pretty quickly. But currently, it takes us about two weeks to get a new version of the app to users. Over those two weeks, we see 2,000 new downloads, but those 2,000 users hit our critical bugs and more than 1,600 of them subsequently delete the app. In addition to losing these users, they're also pretty unlikely to recommend our app to their friends and family and may even recommend against it, so our costs could run deep. We learn from this lesson and we want to avoid mistakes like this in the future. We can accomplish this by adding a thorough QA process, ensuring we check every aspect of the app before we ship. But a process like this takes time, which means our loop size can suffer. How can we expand our quality coverage without expanding our loop size? Enter test automation. Testing your apps in any way is better than not testing at all. So a manual testing approach is an okay start. But it takes a long time to manually test an entire app on a single device, especially keeping in mind you have to repeat the process every time you update the app. It is a mostly linear time cost in that each additional device you test on will add the time it takes to test your app to the total testing time. An app that takes 45 minutes to test manually will take nearly 8 hours to test on just 10 device configurations. You can speed up your test exponentially by automating your test cases. Most gestures and interactions are executed within a fraction of a second when automated. This is a drastic improvement and an important step forward in your quality maturity. But it is still a long and cumbersome process to test on multiple device configurations. You need to test each device configuration one at a time, so once again, there is a time cost for each additional device you want to support. This is where Mobile Center Test showcases its value. By leveraging device concurrency, apps can be tested across myriad device configurations simultaneously, meaning there is little to no additional time cost to support testing on new device configurations. Let's take a look at a few highlights of the test service. Mobile Center Test provides access to real mobile devices, providing an environment that is closest to the one your users are in. The Device Lab offers more than 400 unique device configurations across Android and iOS with device models from all over the world. Devices are wiped clean and reset after each test run, ensuring a secure environment for every user. Tests written using popular frameworks are supported, including Appium, Espresso, and Xamarin UI Test, with XCUI Test available soon. Test runs generate a rich visual report with screenshots, video, and step-by-step -step test navigation. Device and test logs are available for every test run, and stack traces are provided for any test failures. Peak CPU and memory usage data is available as well as system resource usage for each test step. So let's take a look at how to get up and running with Mobile Center Test. The exact steps you'll take to get set up vary slightly depending on the test framework of choice, but the experience is roughly the same. Today we'll be looking at the experience for an Android developer using Espresso. There are essentially three steps to prepare your tests to run in Mobile Center. First, we'll need to add the dependency to the project's app module. Next, we'll import the included packages into our test class files. Finally, we'll instrument our test cases with the label function, which provides a name for each test step in the test report and signals for a screenshot to be taken. This lets us navigate the test report step by step. As I mentioned, for today's demo, we're going to take a look at the experience for an Android developer using the Espresso test framework, setting up their existing project in Mobile Center. We'll assume you've already signed up and get started from the Mobile Center dashboard. I'll navigate to Add New App. We're going to use a simple note-taking app for Android, obviously on the Android OS, and built with Java. We'll skip SDK setup for now and skip ahead to test, since that's the bit we're interested in today. When I launch the new test run dialog, the first thing I'll see is the device selector. This is how I determine which devices I want to target with the upcoming test run. My project only supports Android 7.0 and above, so I'm only going to target devices running that version of the OS. Looks like there are six available. If I had a more robust set of device configurations to target, the filter tools let me narrow down by things like OS version, manufacturer, and the CPU on the device.
I'll keep these tests in the master series because I've not organized my test suite by features just yet, and make sure I select the Espresso test framework. Checking out the documentation on the final page, looks like I need to install the Mobile Center CLI, which for today I've already done. Next, looks like I need to check out some documentations to prepare the test code to run in Mobile Center. Checking out the docs, this looks pretty much like what we discussed before. Some changes to the build system, updating my tests. So let's go ahead and step through that. First, we need to include the extensions in the project. We'll add this in the project's app module. Remember, once you've changed your Gradle files, be sure to sync in Android Studio to make sure the IDE is behaving the way you expect. Next, we need to add the imports to all of my test class files. I'll do this right here. Note, if you have auto import enabled in Android Studio, you may be able to skip this step. As you begin to use the library, the imports should be done automatically for you. Checking back with the documentation, it's time to update our test cases. We'll first instantiate the report helper, which again makes our label feature available throughout our test code. Checking back with the docs, looks like the last thing to do is instrument the label function itself. Now the label feature is unopinionated. You can use whatever convention you like to label and organize your tests. Personally, I like BDD, so that's what I'll use today. I'm going to step through each of the steps in my tests and provide a label. And we'll go ahead and copy this. Oops. And lastly, our assertion should. So taking a look at what I've done here, I provided a BDD style labeling for each of my test steps. To step through those quickly, given I click new note, then I give the note a title and I give the note content when I navigate back to the home screen and confirm to save the note, then I should see the title of my new note. This is all we need to do to instrument the tests and prepare them to run in Test Cloud. Looking back at Mobile Center, looks like we're ready to copy our command and send it over to the command line interface. So we will copy this here, return to the terminal, and from the project's root directory, run the command provided to us by Mobile Center. You'll see that the CLI will begin to report status to you right away. This will continue to stream results every 10 seconds until the test run is completed, letting you know that things are still on track or notifying you if any errors have occurred. When I navigate back to Mobile Center, I can see in my test list that the test run we just kicked off is now in progress. I'll be able to see partial results while the test is running. But for now, let's take a look at a test run that's already completed so we can explore the report. Test reports have three levels of detail. The first is the overview, which we're looking at now. The overview essentially tells you how many of your test cases passed and how many of the devices you targeted passed all of the test cases. 
You'll also see a rundown of your test cases from each of your test class files. Drilling down a deeper level, we'll see our device grid. The device grid gives us the step-by-step -step test navigation that we set up using the label function and allows us to see the visual status of the app within each step. Clicking through each of our labels on the left, I'll see the status of the app during each part of the test. The last level of detail is the device detail view. This is mostly useful when you've had test failures. So let's take a look at our second test case, which is showing a failure. Looks like our failure happened on the last test step. And clicking through, it looks like every device failed this step. So we can pretty much take a look at any of them, but I'm going to pick the Pixel because that's the phone I use and I'm interested in this failure. Opening up the device detail view, I see the visual state of the app at this step. On the right hand side is a logs option. Clicking through to logs, I'll have a few different options, but importantly now is test failures. Clicking through to test failures, I'll see a very familiar output of the stack trace from the Android framework. Reading through the first bit, I see the important bit I need to see. No views and hierarchy found matching with text is bananas, which makes sense because I titled my note apples. So I kind of expected this test to fail. But from here, we have what we need to go back and either debug our app code or debug our test code. So that's all it takes to get up and running with an existing application in Mobile Center and getting our tests ready to run. That's it for today's demo and this webinar. If you haven't done so already, you can set up a Mobile Center account at aka.ms slash mobile center. It takes two minutes or less to connect your app and get started, as you saw. Mobile Center is free while in preview, so now is a great time to sign up. You can read more about Mobile Center Test and the rest of the services offered in Mobile Center by visiting the documentation. We've also made available several additional webinars which are a great resource for getting started. At this time, we would be happy to answer any questions. You can ask a question by typing it into the discussion box.